Front Line Chat with Harry Tangy and Dave Wardell. You all right? How are you, buddy? You all right? Uh, How's it yeah, going? Yep, yeah, very good, thank you. But still getting used to the uh, the new professional with Dave Wardell oh. and Hangy. It's brilliant, isn't that? Yeah, no, 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 no. Can we start again? It's yeah, no, said no, no. with Harry Tangy and oh. Dave Wardell. It's going to be this argument, uh-huh. isn't it? We need two versions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We had that chat with uh, with someone once about whose name should go first on the on on a book if you're right co-writing with someone and apparently the more experienced should go second so I'm happy to be second, mate. <laughs> ah, right, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. right. God, blimey. Well, no one will, no one would co-write my book. They refused. They didn't want anything to do with me. So, <laughs> so well, is, self- look, look, we, we can see the poster. I'm sure you bored everybody with it last week when I wasn't well. I like you saying my poster. Last week, I would have spent more time off screen than I would have done on screen if I'd have been here. So, yes, Harry, have you been busy? Mm. Right, yeah, I'm not going to bore people because I, I, I had I did do this a bit last week. But do you know what? I've ordered, uh, you order a few copies because um, there's a few things you, uh, you know, um, I'm not going to say it because I've, I've loaded demand for free books then and it will make bankrupt me before I start. But, I'm thinking that my master got lost. Yeah, yeah. No, remember you got about six of my last one because I kept forgetting I'd sent them to you. So, and then you bought them, bought your present. But it's yeah. the one without the grey, the without the grey stripe in it, and uh, you can see sort of um, it's it's basic. Yeah, it's a basic. For those who don't know, it's it's a it's like a Farms and Fatals Part Two. It's like uh, Thirty Years in Policing, but it is um, it's sort of real life. But so I didn't have to admit it was real life. I've called it a novel. So that that's it, and here's the uh, here's the picture. You can get it on Amazon, and it is um, yeah, you get it on Amazon and ebook or paperback. And it was a lot of fun doing it. It's a a lot of fun doing. It. Anyway, Dave, what have you been up to, my friend? I, I've been ill. <laughs> I've been I've been spending uh, quite a bit of time in in a small room in the house. Uh, but so thankfully that's all done now. So I did manage to watch. The so it I thought that was incredible. So it wasn't just an excuse. I thought it was just an excuse for last Saturday. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, yeah, I yeah, knew it was true. Last Saturday, I'd have been sat here, and then I would have disappeared for 10 minutes, and then I would come back for about oh, a minute. Oh, mate. Mate. Minutes, wouldn't have been fun. That's horrible. That's horrible. I'm sorry about that. And did, were you pampered? Was were I you... pampered? Yeah. No. This not no. This not don't pamper me. They don't care. I had to go and get my own loo roll and everything. <laughs> Did they, so they looked around and thought there's a bigger gap at the, the meal table than usual. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They couldn't get, yeah. they couldn't spend quite so much time in the bathroom themselves. That was about all they know. Does your, do your dogs know if you're ill? Do they sort of judge yeah. something? Yeah, yeah mine yeah. definitely does. Yeah, the two shepherds yeah. are, are the best at it. They, they won't leave your side if they think you're not well. Um, and Maxie, she yeah. thinks you're doing good. He jumps all over you, but if you've got a sore stomach, the last thing you want is for <laughs> is for a thirty oh, something yeah. to jump on your belly. But um, yeah, they're they're lovely. Yeah, lesson. yeah she's. In, I'd describe her as enthusiastic. Very. <laughs> yeah. it was... It'd be great. I mean, honestly, but when I when I went to your house, it was Maxie <laughs> who had actually. Um, She'd searched all my pockets and um, a metal detector over me before she let me in your house. She is such a good little guard dog. She, she pinned me to the floor, frisked yeah. me, and then said, all right, son, you can go in. You know, she doesn't you've taught her to. well. Like, well. like to tell everybody when they arrive that she is in charge and you're only here by her invite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, who have we got? we got someone hiding under a... Ah, oh, hello, hello. You're Australia, aren't you, Silent Rose? And sitting under a duvet and wearing my hoodie. Is that you sitting under a duvet because it's sort of probably three o'clock in the morning in Australia? I don't know. But um, it might be it's, as well, because it's, it's winter. Let me have a look, see what the weather's like. I'm going to say Sydney, that. Rose. But, and but in the meantime, 
And in the meantime, while you're just quickly looking at it, we're going to speak to Karen Henthorne um, in a minute. She's just going to bring her up in a minute. Uh, she's a uh, British actress, character actress. She's absolutely, and she happens to be a very nice person too. Um, so what she Let hasn't done is quite incredible. Time. Say again, what time? 11 degrees and raining. So I didn't look at the time. It'll be early hours. It's the time, it's the, the, time. It's the middle of the night. It'll be, wait to speak to Karen. Um, so yeah, so I, yeah, I went down to Newquay just to see Mother. It's, you know, one of those things we're all getting older. It's all a bit sad really at the moment, isn't it? It comes to us all, but um, it was nice to see Mum. I took Arthur down, walk into Newquay, see an old mate, John Goodman, bit of a cup of coffee, put the world to rights. Nice. told each other how wonderful we are and how horrible everyone else is and you beach? leave those what sorts beach? of what beach did you go to what beach well uh, i wasn't like my there. my yeah my home beach my playground as such growing up was lusty glaze beach wasn't it um oh, so that's yeah that's sort of gone a bit they've got weddings down there they don't want riffraff like me disturbing their weddings so they lock it at the top uh, for certain days and things like that. So um, what did we do? Okay, I lied. I walked into town along the Bowfields, all the green. It's beautiful coastline. Um, and saw John that time. But uh, yeah, I mean, in the winter, it's lovely. You just walk, low tide, walk along the whole thing. You cannot beat that coastline. It's stunningly yeah, beautiful. And um, having mum down there is a great excuse for going down there and seeing it again. So, but yeah, other than that, it's been, I've been busy. But when you say, well, what have you been up to? Um, it's difficult to say. You know, yeah. I don't know. You've been busy being ill. That's just selfish. But yeah, uh, no, yeah. It's all about I you, isn't it? I know. It meant, it meant I got to rest, which was quite nice. Um, hmm. But yeah, not a lot this end, really. I say we watched the football. I'm working the football on, on Sunday, unfortunately. So fingers crossed it it wins and it goes quietly. If you're Italian, sorry about that, but hopefully England win. Um, and it goes all nice yeah. and quiet. Everybody goes home. That would be really, really nice. Um, yes, what? Well, have a jolly. Have a. a a quiet drink and to wander home. Yes, I can imagine. Look, yeah. okay, Stephanie. Stephanie gave me a hard time yesterday. She said, Harry, you haven't mentioned Finn's Law Part 2. You haven't mentioned Dave was here. He'd be telling you. And I said, hang on, Stephanie, I was going to mention. It was a little thing there. And I couldn't. She was that day. She can't. She was getting at me. So, Stephanie, I, I admitted. Admit it, you know, but it was brilliant. Uh, Dave, anything? June, well, 29th of your June, final words came... on that? It came into it came into um, into power, so it was obviously it passed all its stages two months ago. Then there has to be a two month grace before it actually comes in. So now, yeah, 29th of June was when it actually became a thing, a real thing, a law. Which you know, if you <coughs> if you attack a service animal or any animal now, rather than facing a maximum sentence, potential sentence of six months, you can now face a maximum of five years, which is incredible. I think we still got a way to go. Ten years would probably be much better, but let's take it step at a time. That's actually well, quite nice. Is it? Let's... nice thing to do. I was going to say, you must be thinking, what do I, you must have so much extra time. You've got time to be ill now. Do you think that was yeah, just exactly. a, it was just your body going, all right, that's it now. I give up. That was yeah. enough now. Yeah, yeah. Just in one case of, you were tempted. To... One of my bosses, who's brilliant, said, you must be, uh, you must be grateful for the extra time. But I mean, you know, it wasn't just me. There was loads and loads and loads of people involved. And, you know, my very good friend, Kay, she was absolutely incredible. She's probably a little, although she's very busy, um, I don't know how she fits it all in. She's probably a little bit lost at the moment, thinking, what am I going to do with all my time? But we've got lots of plans, lots of ideas, lots of stuff, haven't we, Harry? Yeah, and uh, I just shout out to Valerie Barber, who's um, back from furlough. Valerie, you're going to say what you do. What do you do? That's what do you do? Weird. Are you able to tell us what you do? It must be so strange. Change for us. We were all still at, at work, but I know people who have been either furloughed or working from home for that amount of time, and it must be odd. It must, for some, it must be quite daunting going back. Um, some people are going back to you know different roles, different um, uh, within the organisation. So it must be quite yeah, odd. yeah. It must be Dave. He is, he is mean. He is always. Mean. I do. I do. I do love him. You say. You say Dave's like one of those where you run around the playground, you pull the pigtails of the person you actually fancy, you know, 
Okay, not when you're 24 or university, maybe when you're, you know, but that's it, Dave, you know, and I'm not saying I fancy, oh, no, I'm going to stop there now. Anyway, yeah. I think we'll move on, right. we'll move on. Right, Where I okay. think I'm going to introduce uh, Karen Henthorne, right? So Karen Henthorne is a, a British character actress who's played in many a soap film, drama series, and acted on stage in many various roles. She currently teaches screen acting at the Italia Conti Academy in Clapham and Manchester School of Theatre, along with stage and screen acting. You'll know her from things like The Booze Cruise, The Trouble with Maggie Cole, Silent Witness, Homefront, Casualty, Heartbeat, Holby City, The Bill, and Shameless. And then there's loads much more stuff that she's done recently as well, which we're going to talk about. And she happens to be a very nice person. So uh, welcome. Can we please welcome uh, Karen? How are you? How are you indeed? Hello. All right, Dave. All right, Harry. I'm fine. Right, Thank uh, you. How are you? Yeah, really good. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you. It is. We're very lucky, especially as you've just been moving house or something, haven't you? So you're, I have, you're yes, in the look, process look, of a stressful time. Yeah. New staircase today, which is going back because it doesn't quite fit. And oh, God. Yeah. On things, we're not, oh, it looks a mess, but we're trying to get yeah. there. Living boxes. We go, you see, lots, it looks like a doctor's waiting room at the moment. We've got too many chairs. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're working through it. We're getting there. We need to decorate, but we're getting there. It's fantastic. Yeah. First time I've ever bought a house at 58 years oh, old. No. I'm, I'm drawn up at last. Way. Yeah. Yeah, well, is, yeah. that because it, is that because you move around a lot or you're no, just never I'm in one place? Slapdash. No, I'm just slapped down. I'm just rubbish in the morning. I just, I'm just rubbish. No, it's because I'm wasted. No, it's not, It's because I'm rubbish with money. It's because, uh, and and I've never had a regular income. And when I have had a bit of a regular income and earned lots of money in a small, short period of time, I've been paying off debt. Um, mm. uh, yeah, and I've just had to get my finger out, get myself together, grow up. And well, before well, I retire, well, well, I've got... Adam? Because it's it's difficult to know where to to start with you, Karen. Because you know some of the late the the names that Harry's just given over are, are just incredible. So we, we won't start with that. We'll start with what it's actually like to be an actor. I think you've touched on it on, on it there. It's 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 quite a, a yeah. an interest. I mean, Harry and I obviously come from a, a strange uh, working background, but acting must must be up there with that as well oh. because you can go through stages where. You know, you're working really hard to get jobs and nothing comes in. And then all of a sudden you have a flurry yeah. and it does really well yeah. and everybody wants you. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's yeah. It's, like? It's, yeah. it's bizarre. It's bonkers. It's a vocation. You've got, you, 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 there are so, it, I, I don't, I don't know how to even answer, where to start answering that question, Dave, because it could, we could be here forever. I've got so much to say about it, but it's, um, it's, um, I, I teach, I teach screen acting specifically so in the drama area and a lot of my students ask what is the most difficult part of being an actor uh, and I said the times when you're out of work uh, the yeah. job is the holiday because you're doing what you love you're doing what you're trained to do you're doing what you've been waiting for you're doing uh, 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 the, the job that you it was, was your 20th audition which is the one that you got so the job although it's hard and you've got you've got you know you've got to be focused and not and be prepared um but uh, uh, spiritually emotionally psychologically the job's the holiday the break from life as an actor which is a life a lot of the time being unemployed and so the difficult things is about keep when you're out of work is about keeping the faith uh, mm. keeping hope um, uh, um, trusting that you can you'll get that next job and that, or that next job or the one after that it's 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 tough um I, um I think there are so many sacrifices like I've never been able to afford to have a house before um and that's my choice yeah. of being an actor um I could have been a full-time teacher but I would that wouldn't have made me happy being a full-time teacher and giving up my passion um mm. but you know so there are pros and cons the pros are it's wonderful when you get the work uh, it's fantastic when you get the work see, and the good I, thing about being out of work is that you appreciate the work more you know yeah sorry Harry I I no no that's fine. I just think it's you're just so courageous listening to someone like you because I had a set wage and unless I did something really stupid I was probably going to keep that wage which meant that I could sort of experiment a few things and I had a little small business and I might have gone out with a gun on my side and gone to you know fights and you know and violent things but for me the fear of coming home and then you must learn to just find your self-confidence to go you know what no it'll be all right it'll be all right 
you know you have to have faith the, 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 the amount of times that honestly and i'm not exaggerating there's been two or three times and i'm not exaggerating when i've had when i've been at my overdraft limit i've i've maxed out my credit card i have nothing hmm. but friends to borrow Fine. money off i've got that but on my own resources nothing and then i get a job now i'm not saying it's fate or anything like that i'm not saying anything like that yeah but it's just bizarre how that's happened sometimes but it has been i've been right up right up my back has been right against the wall i don't think that's courageous i might be stupidity or it might be a time to maybe give up because you're never going to work i don't know what that is right. but you just it's have to keep you have to keep going you have to just you just have to, i don't know i don't know and if i hadn't got that job then that then gets me back in credit um i don't know what i would have done i don't know i, I can't answer that well, it um, must be very testing but yeah i mean you do it's really testing you speak with absolute passion, and I guess it's the passion for it. It that is. Brings it has to be. Yeah. And I guess that's what encourages, you know, makes you do the, the teaching side of yes. it as well. Because why yes. would why why would you teach people to live the same life? I'm not. And I'm not. Well, I, we talk about that in class. I talk about that in class. I do talk about it. Look, look you know, right. I'm very honest. It's not an easy industry to go into. You know, something like you know, at 95 percent unemployment at any one time. More now because you don't even have to be a member of the equity union now to work. When I left drama school, you had to be an equity member in order to work. You don't have to do that now. So, in a, in a way, anybody can do it if you like. I'm not saying anyone's got the ability to do it but anybody you know mm. who's available who wants to who's, if the job's offered couldn't do it you don't need to be in a union anymore so it's 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 open um it, 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 uh, so we do talk about that and i and i remember people t teachers used to come into me to us at drama school in 1983 um and say <laughs> about how difficult it was and i never you never believe but you do believe them but you go okay no. well, well we'll see we'll see we'll see it's not gonna happen to me though is it i'm gonna be all right i'm gonna be fine um well you assume, uh, and you assume that if it's, you assume with someone like you who's on the tv all the time and I'm, for I'm not considerable time you think time. Where are you, you know, I mean, well, let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. You just see a lot of repeats. Let's take it back a bit. And because in 2008, you were, you, you'd you been in Coronation Street for a while. You'd been, uh, you, you'd also been all all the soaps, really. So, Harper, Holy, 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 Holy City. And, but okay. you, there was a mass culling. There was a mass culling in Coronation Street. There was about yeah. five characters left. What is that yeah. like? Is that a shockwave going through? Well, I think it's a shockwave going through the whole of the cast, you know, when there's yeah. a call. There, there is, you know, because I don't think you see it coming. Um, you're not really giving much notice. Um, um, I did 18 months uh, and I was gutted to leave. But when I got that job, I did say to my agent that I had at that time, I've got a different agent now, yeah. but I did say to my agent at that time, I don't really want to do more than 18 months oh, um, yeah. um, because I don't want to, I don't... I, I don't want. Well, it's being, I, about being stereotyped and just yeah, not. You I wanted to, yeah, to do want other to, things. I want to do other things, and yeah. as a consequence of wanting to do other things, it means that you're going to have to accept the inevitable period of unemployment. Uh, but because I teach, when I'm in between acting jobs, I, I'm all right. I'm all right financially. That, and I also creatively, it it feeds me teaching screen acting so it, hmm. it's so when i'm not acting i'm still working in a field i love yeah. with with people with people who with passionate, and with it's different. passionate it's the other side so it must be yeah. quite fun a change and I'm, I, absolutely and i'm a better I'm, i get better as an actor because i'm teaching so i'm learning from my students and we work together it's great so um so uh, uh, leaving Corey was i was gutted because i loved it and now what i i loved it i loved working i wasn't working every day it depends on what storyline you've got but what i the main thing i loved about it which hit me like a ton of bricks when i got the job and i didn't expect it because i didn't know the feeling and it was the first time i've ever had that feeling of being 18 yeah. months in work right was i i i, I I was, I, I was, I felt light. Uh, I felt light, and I've never felt light since leaving drama school because since eight, 1983. Oh, I've done that one already. I'm sorry. I'll do it again. Not like it. 1983. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and it was and I, and it, it, and, it, and it, I understood. It was I had I didn't have anything to worry about. 
Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't have yeah. to worry about money of coming course. in. You started to make worry. plans. I started to make plans. I, I had I had no debts. I I could have a really nice Christmas and buy friends really nice Christmas presents and go out for dinner if I wanted to and not worry about yeah. it. And all those th- tiny things that we all which we can we can take for granted if we're in the position we're fortunate enough to be able to take that for granted. I could have a life and not worry. Yeah. And um, that was the strangest feeling of going, I've got 18 months, I'm w- going to be in having a contract signed for 18 months, and I don't have mm. to worry about anything. So and that's stability in amazing. your life, which some people really need. You know, I work with some people that need structure, and they need yeah. to know that, you know, they're going to be coming in on this yeah. amount of days and this amount of hours. Yeah. You just you've gone nearly forty years and only had eighteen months of that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I did War Horse. Um, I was on tour with War Horse a few years ago. Uh, we went around the UK, went to uh, Ireland, and when we did went to South Africa, it was amazing. And that was the second time uh, when uh-huh. I had eighteen months. Uh, 18. eighteen months, and again, that was absolute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and what Look, part did you play? Oh, pardon. What part did you play? I was the mother. I was uh, uh, oh god, it's such a long time ago. I was I can't remember the boy. I was the mm-hmm. I was the mother of the boy who had Joey the horse. Who of the lead of the name, like. of the lead story, the protagonist. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love the way Karen. I love the way you can't remember the boy's name, but you can remember Joey's name. I mean Joey. He's a, <laughs> I he's can a, remember I, the horse. Yeah, I can't remember. I haven't, his son. I haven't been lucky enough to see it on stage, but I, I've read the book it's and I've amazing. seen him, and it really I, struck a chord with me. It's Such amazing. An incredible film. We, we went, so so you had, you had four, I think it was four teams of puppeteers with the horses. So you had four teams, so you had three puppeteers on each horse. And we went, when we were in South Africa, this is amazing. When we were in South, those puppeteers, they studied the horse sounds, they studied the horse movements. And when I was on stage with those horses, there wasn't, wasn't once that I didn't believe they were a real horse. Yeah. And we were invited to South Africa. We were invited to a, 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 a vineyard uh, and we went to the vineyard and there was a paddock in the vineyard and there were horses in the paddock. And one of the teams of puppeteers, the three of them, who, who became very close friends, they worked very closely together. Oh, there's Lee. That was my son. Wow. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Look, there's Joey. Amazing. <laughs> and me, we were in the paddock and the three puppeteers started. They were at one end of the paddock and there were three horses at the other end of the paddock. And the puppeteers started making the horse sounds. And it wasn't like me doing a horse sound going, oh, yeah. no, or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know that was a chicken. I don't know that was. <laughs> They were doing like, it was amazing. Well, they were yeah. doing proper. And then a goat ran up. <laughs> <laughs> and the horses at the other end of the paddock heard the sound and they were looking round and their ears were up and the, they stopped because they heard the sound. And the puppeteers carried on making the sound of the horse all the, 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 it was beautiful. And the horses slowly, tentatively started making their way across the paddock wow. towards the sound wow. and they couldn't work it out. And then when they sort of worked out where the sound was coming from, they then stopped and their necks, they extended their necks to try and smell. And they couldn't yeah. smell the, the, the smell of a horse. Yeah. They couldn't link the sound of a horse because there's no smell. And when yeah. they realised that the sounds were coming from humans, they freaked out. They were freaking ah. out. Yeah, it was amazing because yeah. the puppeteers made proper. It was like oh, it was like it was amazing. Exactly. I'd love to have seen that. I it remember seeing them on just on television, and I was absolutely Incredible. taken aback Incredible. by the natural movement of them. Incredible. And- they studied so hard, and the body shape of those puppeteers changed in those 18 yeah. months, and they, and they ended up looking like swimmers, you know, really yeah. strong shoulders. Oh, wow. And the horses, Joey weighed, weighed about eight and a half stone, and Top uh, top Thorn, was that the other, or was that the name of a person? I can't remember. The other horse, the, the, mm. the, 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 the bigger horse, uh, was 10 stone and so the riders the, the boy who played my son um uh, anybody who went on the horses had to be weighed in every month to make sure that they didn't go above a certain weight oh, because the tears had to carry them and on my birthday i was allowed on joey on my birthday they let me go on joey it was fantastic oh, really? I somewhere because i had my carriage and never went on the horses uh, yeah. but for my birthday they let me go on it was amazing it's amazing yeah. it was an amazing experience been- I remember watching a clip because obviously it was massive that they were having this, these puppets on on stage, and I remember watching a clip. And I remember thinking at the time, 
you know oh you know how are we going to get over the fact that there's three men under it but within within literally seconds yeah and watching how yeah. naturally yeah. they did the animal behavior yeah. you yeah. completely forgot yeah. that there were three guys yeah. there it's two it's two people underneath and one man or a woman outside doing the head and you even yeah. forget that there's someone outside doing the head on a yeah. pole it's incredible it's, it's, it's it's my biggest regret not going to that. But so then you've brought these relationships. You've worked with your your other actors. You have your their close friends. You've gone through all the difficult bits because sometimes it goes wrong. But then you have to get over issues that certain. But then it it all ends again, doesn't it? How do you emotionally yeah. deal with that? You know, well, does you it, it just it. finishes it? You just get you used do. to it. You get used to it. You keep in touch with, or you don't keep in touch with. Um, you get used to it. Life goes on. I've been doing it for thirty-five years now, and you, yeah. you, you know, it just it, that's it. That's it. And there's, the the lovely thing about that, it, it, you, the great, the great. I, I'm all. The lovely thing is, I'm. I, I think I've always been really sad when jobs end. Uh, and yeah. the great thing is about that is it just says that I've had a really good time while I've been doing the job. Yeah, because it's good. If I'd gone, I can't wait for this job to end, then that tells me that I've had a really it's been a, been a bit of a shit job. You does, know, does it get? Does it get? Um, does it sometimes, if especially a long running one, does it? Can it get a little bit monotonous? And is it yes. difficult to get your lines and freshen your lines up in your yes. mind? Yes. So the good thing about the Warhorse tour is when because I've never really particularly wanted to do a tour. And I wasn't really sure whether I even wanted to do the job when I was offered it because it was a long time away from home. Uh, and I didn't really want to, I think I was, what am I in my, so I was in my early 50s when I got that job, uh, mid, uh, 52, 53, and I thought, oh God. Only about five so years ago then, Dave. It was about five Let's or six see. or seven years or so ago. Um, and I just thought, do I, but anyway, I did it. And I was, and the great, sorry. So the, the good thing is, is what kept it fresh was when you moved city, after yeah. about six yeah. weeks of being in the same city, each city, each area had a different energy. The audience offered something different. Right. Like um, in Edinburgh, the audiences were very different from the audiences in Plymouth, who were very different from the audiences in Cape Town. Um, so you you it 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 wakens you up when you've got a new audience. They laugh or react in different places of the, the piece of the play yeah. so and then also because as a company there was 50 of us in the company there was about 32 in the cast but it was a company of about 50 and so we're all moving at the same time all getting new digs at the same time all finding our feet at the same time cool. so when you yeah. when you open in a new city that first or second week you're still refreshed <laughs> with a new different energy and a, a, a different discussion backstage about your digs mm. or about where the best Oldie is, or about whatever you know, yeah. or where the beach is, yes. or where the best bars are, or whatever it is, and then you take that newness on stage, which 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 gives the play because you can hit a bit of a wall. You know, we did something like five hundred and twelve shows, uh, five hundred and sixteen performances of Warhol oh, in wow. in about thirteen months because I think we rehearsed for ten weeks. Uh, it was an eighteen month contract, but I think we rehearsed for ten weeks in London. So I think we did about uh, 15, I don't know. Yeah, about 512, 516 shows. Um, and uh, it's exhausting. Uh, uh, and it gets it can get monotonous. But you've got to find a new way and go into a new city. Just sort of yes. pump you up a little bit, you know. Yeah. Rather than being yes. in the same place. How, how many times have you done, uh, you know, the same character the set not the same character the same role you know like warhorse obviously you had your script and you had to do that 500 times yeah how many times have you had a role like that because you know making yourself cry and mean it at the same at the right time yeah. and laugh and act surprised yeah. for the 500th yeah. time and well, well, um, that, that's the longest run I've done of the same play, repeating the same play like with Coronation Street did 18 months but you've got a different scene every time yeah. you go on so the same, that's the longest I've done in theatre, 18 months. You know, I've done a nine-week run here and a, a, a two-month run there, but 18 months, well, 18 months is the longest I've ever done. So you, yeah. you actually so, teach method, you, going from that then, you teach method acting, and the, the, the cliche is, oh, how do you make yourself cry? And I know you've been quoted to say, well, I do think of something quite sad. My view is, if that's still the same in your method, is, is it, without getting too personal in what you think about, is... Can you find that it can again? You need to find something else because you almost it overuse out. it still regularly. It does. Yeah, yeah it runs. Even out. though the original, yeah. oh, even though in your own world, in your own privacy, that original 
sadness might be as as big as it was before, but for something to click into and yeah, work you quickly, need the, the trigger. yeah, yeah, you need to sometimes refresh your tri refresh your triggers, yeah. find new triggers, yeah. So oh, I so you have to go, triggers. You have to go and make yourself sad. You have to go and yeah. bring your friends up and say, I need you to upset me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not going to work. Oh, this is a, this is a, I need, you, you I need to look memory, after this. You know, your history of experience. You are, Dave, you could, hire, you could hire cute little puppies out for just, just uh, yeah. enough to get attached oh, no. to, and then you take them away. Yeah, no wonder where you were going with that, though. <laughs> Yes, take them away. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Yeah. So going on completely different now is you. You were in Shameless, weren't you? And I think it was the oh second my, series. Oh, one episode, a long, long time well, ago. One episode, yeah. but didn't you have quite an amusing one? Were you a social yeah. worker? Yeah. And, you, and I remember yeah. reading you took the wrong baby from the wrong family. <laughs> what was – because that was quite a uh, – I mean, that was that that was different. People weren't used to that. That was right edgy stuff, wasn't it? Shameless, um, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was fantastic, Shameless. It I was loved raw. Shameless. <laughs> really raw. The yeah, unapologetic, great writing, fantastic mm. acting, great locations, yeah. proper mank. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's lovely when those things are such a success because they are so different from yeah. your average. Uh, drama or whatever you know you want to you want to call it because it, it is it was just so on the edge and people were like yeah <gasps> yeah you know and they're like <laughs> can't believe yeah. it it must Frank, have been quite Frank, fun to do Frank. it was so yeah. awful wasn't he well not awful yeah. he was an alcoholic bless him you know it was terrible but what he did you know and the way he treated his family and his actions his yeah. choices we just and you just always forgave him for it <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, and, yeah. but that was the thing and as, as police officers said so Dave would know is that I, I used to go to a lot of domestics and um, you used to almost be yeah they say you're a social worker because you say you know and the guy would say to me usually the guy who was saying oh I just get so fast she knows which buttons to push and and as long as it wasn't criminal and it was you know it was just loud arguments that the neighbours would call in it was like and I would say, well, just, you know, you when you get yourself being wound up, you just need to take the dog out for a walk. And just cool yeah. down. You know, I said, I said, that's what I do when I get wound up. I just just take the dog out. Yeah. And my, dog, my dog's happy about it. It's knowing those things. But we yeah. there were some reflections afterwards for us to think, yeah, you know, it, this isn't miles away sometimes. Yeah, it's yeah, sometimes, absolutely. Sometimes in an exaggeration. But and it's very much you know that we some people just don't know how to get out of that trap when it isn't abusive that circling trap and the, and i think the police are a lot better at that now with that they call it safeguarding where they try to break that circle and give options to come out but right. um yeah i mean it was I, before it's time i thought it was it was phenomenal but yeah. it started so it all started you were on stage i think first time when you were like 13 or something were you it what what got you into it in the first place? Because uh, I've got the Oldham Theatre Workshop Oldham here. Oldham Theatre Workshop. Oh, you're very good, aren't you, Harry? You're very good. <laughs> Record that one, Dave. Record yeah, that. We'll yeah, use that. <laughs> yeah, Oldham Theatre Workshop when I was uh, 12, 13. Yeah, David Johnson, Oldham Theatre Workshop, um, where Sarah Lancashire went to, Swan Jones went to, a lot of people who've gone on to have very, very successful careers went mm. to. Uh, I loved it, uh, and then I went. I did my uh, uh, A levels at school, which I failed. Uh, so I stayed on the next two years. By which point, uh, Grange Arts Centre had been built, so they did a foundation course in theatre studies. So I went there to do my yeah. A levels because I didn't want to. I've not didn't. I, I, I was told by Oldham Council that you needed A levels to go to drama school. Well, it turns out you didn't, uh, no. but I believed you did. Uh, anyway, I then did two more A levels, which I passed in subjects I was interested in drama and communication studies and then oh, went to drama okay. school when i was 19 uh, instead of going to drama school at 17 18 which is i think too young anyway you know even 19 is a little too young i think maybe your early 20s <laughs> would be a good time to go to oh, drama really? school you've got a lot more to yeah. offer i think well, that's interesting i thought you, you know i thought some people in the job would have said you know get in there early and you know mix with the people and you know get some experience under your belt but you're right it comes from life experience i guess yeah i think so yeah i think you yeah, appreciate it, all it those more emotions, isn't it yeah, mm. it's, I suppose it depends what sort yeah. of training you want, but the training I want and what I sort of offer in a small scale to my students, uh, the, the method and personal experience, uh, you know, you've just got more to draw upon, really. And I, you appreciate yeah. it more. I think you take it more seriously. The older you are, like, you know, when you're older, you take things more seriously. If you're in your 20s, I think you appreciate a training more than you do when you're 17, 18, 19. 
Um, it's just, there's, a, there's a big difference between being 17 and 23, isn't there? You know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. No, yeah. without a doubt. You know. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, it's it's something. So if you so say you hadn't say you didn't go to Oldham um, <clears throat> workshops. Shop. Okay. So yeah. What, yeah. What what would your alternative course have been? Well. At the time, I mean, I don't know if it would have, I don't know, but at the time, I'd applied to be a red coat at. Um, oh, right. Yeah, okay. In case I didn't get into drama school. Um, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't know what I wanted. I only ever wanted to act. So, um, <laughs> so applying for a red coat at Pontins, um, but I got into drama school. So, it, obviously, I went to drama school, but if I hadn't got into drama school, I would have, if I'd have got the job as a red court, I would have gone off and done that for the summer season and then rethought, maybe apply for drama school again and maybe not got in, yeah. like if I hadn't got in. And then I don't know which one. It still would have taken you down the same lines, wouldn't it? It still would have taken you down the same yeah. lines of entry. Yeah. 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 I still wanted to do but something then what was that the influence? Way. I, I, I have what, no what? idea, but I came across a really? photograph, an old photograph of my granddad recently, who's since long since died a long time ago, and he and it was a black and white photograph of him doing panto dressed up as a dame. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure it was I a pantomime? No idea. And are you sure it's not just a photograph you stumbled across? You shouldn't have stumbled across. <laughs> <laughs> private, in his private life. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea. So and my mum's a fantastic dancer. Okay. Well, she used to be a fantastic, fantastic ballroom dancer. So um, I think it's just something. No, 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 there was no, there's no performers now. Fan. Well, my granddad obviously was a performer, uh, and he had lipstick. It was all black and white, and he had these. Re obviously, he must have had real rouge on his cheeks because you could see in a black and white photo all the different shades of colour on his face, even though it was all black and different grey. It's been amazing. Um, so I think I think there must be something. I think my mum's a fantastic seamstress. Uh, 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 my aunt Dorothy, my mum's sister, is a is a fantastic seamstress. Um, they're very that, creative. That, right. So I don't know. There's something mm. there. If not, I did think about applying for the police when I was uh? 17. If I hadn't got into drama school, <laughs> but I was, I'm only five foot, and they told me I was too short. Uh, so I might have been. Then, I might yes. have joined. It's, it's changed mm -hmm. now, hasn't it? Yeah, you yeah, don't know what lucky escape you had. The lucky escape you had. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so you paid that. in the bill instead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that was a long time ago, isn't it? Apparently it's coming back, the bill, it's, apparently. Yeah, I've heard that. I, I mean... I, uh, it, yeah. was a, it was a real iconic show, I think, when, when I was yeah. young, when I was growing up. I mean, it, it was gritty and it was London Borough and I was from London. And I think part of my wanting to be a cop came from, from that show. Of course, nothing is dealt with in an hour like it's shown on that show. But it'd be interesting oh, yeah. to see when it comes back. Um, you know, I like, yeah. I like the... Uh, hey, hey, we'll I, I, on that. I liked it when they went to get the... Um, from the intelligence guy, I need a, I need a photo of John Smith. And you go... With his filing cabinet, he'll bring this A4 color photograph of John Smith's face, you know, and you think, <laughs> eh, it wasn't like that, you know, you probably had to wait seven <laughs> days for it, and then you get some rubbish thing with probably yeah. no photograph. It wasn't quite like that, but I, I suppose the thing I liked about it, it gave the police a human face, and people got connected to okay. those people, those officers. And uh, yeah. I think we could probably do with a bit of that now, you know, yeah, as opposed yeah, to. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever, I mean, obviously you get your script, yeah. but have you ever had roles where you have to go and uh, research and you have to go and be it? You know, I'm, I always think of the example of a Dustin Hoffman, I'm a just, man who's I time. normally get, yeah, yeah, yeah. I normally get women that have had a really hard time because I look like I need a holiday. I look like I've had a hard time. I've not had a hard time in my life, <laughs> but I look like I've had a hard time. Um, so I always play very emotional parts. Women whose husbands have died or who are alcoholics or who want to kill themselves or <laughs> kill their children or... You uh, could take uh, offence at that. You, know. <laughs> hey, you are. You could take offence at that. <laughs> Why well, you keep well, giving well, these, I, these, I these first, roles? I did at first, but now I've got used to it. At first, I thought, I hope I don't get yeah. that part, playing a, playing whatever, and then I get it. And you go, oh, my God, I must look like that. I've got used to it now. <laughs> uh, but recently, I've just played a detective, uh, which is the first time I've ever played a detective. It's the first time I've ever played a detective, and it's the first time I've ever played someone who knows a left foot from a right. It's the first time I've ever played someone who's authoritative. No, no, not off. I've played a headmistress before, but who, who's just yeah. who's just on it. And um, so, so I, I it, it was a something called teacher. 
It's called, it's called Teacher with Sheridan Smith. For Channel 5, it'll be out at the end of this year. And uh, Sheridan Smith, uh, uh, she's, she's the teacher, and she's she finds herself in a situation where it's involving an un underage sexual activity with one of her students. And I'm the detective in the first two episodes. And so, uh, Dave, going back to your question, so that is so far removed from my experience playing a detective. So I have a friend, Heather, who's one of my uh, students who's a retired police inspector and his oh, wife okay. is a retired detective inspector. So working in the in the area of uh, sex sex crimes with kids. And yeah. yeah. So I spent a day with her with my script going through it line by line about wow. a pro, about em, 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 what emotional connection, if any, how do I deliver, not delivering the lines, but m my relationship mm. with someone who I'm questioning. Because yeah. that's, I have no idea. So I spent a day yeah. with her, she went through, I've got about four or five scenes in two episodes, and I've got a really long, uh, in, uh, 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 what's it called? Yes, I don't even know what it's called. Like um, uh, monologue, when you're investing, when you, when, oh. no, when you're, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asking her questions, what's it called? Oh, interview. Oh, when I'm asking, yeah. a, when I'm asking, yeah. a, a what? Interview. A what? When you're yeah. interviewing. What's the other, yeah. yeah, what's the other word for it? Um... Oh. Oh, interrogation? Invest um, interrogation. Invest That's the word I'm looking for. Interrogation. Yeah. It's five syllables. I mean, I can't remember that. So, uh, this, this is uh, an interrogation. interrogation. It's Inter like, we, <laughs> tell us what you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's called interviewing that. Okay. So I'm interviewing yeah. her, and it's yeah. a long, long scene. So I don't know. I don't know. So Heather, my friend, was very, very informative about what you give away, what you don't give away, uh, gathering information, yeah. no emotional connection. And that was very far removed from me because all my parts I play are always really emotional connection in some way. Yeah, yeah. But there was no emotional connection. So I found that a re fantastic, so refreshing for me to do something where I don't have to cry or I don't have to break down or I don't have to whatever. It was so refreshing. It was great. So, so you just your puppies yeah, yeah, yeah. for a minute, Dave. Yeah. We don't need your puppies to learn how to cry again. Yeah, You're yeah, all right yeah. for a minute. That's we're we're yeah. onto the yeah. that part of this nail. Oh, how refreshing! Yeah, part of this nail. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to sound like an odd question. But I mean, obviously, you did Coronation Street for eighteen months. You did War Horse for eighteen months. When you're in those long contracts, can you still? Uh, it's going to sound really odd, but I've never done your job. Can you still remember who Karen Henthorn is, or do you become? That, yeah, that thing. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that you've got method actors like, um, oh God, where do you start? Um, you know, who, who really, who, who, uh, uh, who uh, what's that? What's the uh, Irish actor called? Who, oh God, can't remember I'm his name. Who stay in character? Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm the worst character. remembering names. Dave will know this. Yeah. It, in the, in the yeah. Break, come on, come on, comment, comments list character. will come up you know yeah yeah they, they uh, really they really take it and it takes over their almost um, their lives yeah yeah that must, that must be yeah. very strange and quite unnerving very for people strange. who know them yeah but no i you know yeah. i i you know i i do as much as is safe and is comfortable and hopefully enough to tell a truthful story you know i don't sort of you know you know it's got to be safe um all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you. Go on, Dave. Go on. Oh, just just a quickie. Do you go back through your performances? You know, when Coronation Street was on, did you record it? Did you look? Did you watch? Did you think yes. so? I could have done yes. that. Yes, done I that. do. You're yes, very I do. critical of yourself. Uh, you're, because you're, I want to learn. Critical. Yeah. I want to learn. I want to yeah. see what works and why. I want to see what doesn't work and why. Because when you're on a soap, you don't get much direction because there's no time. Yeah. So you're mm. sort of on your own with it in a way, you know, you block in, remember your lines, find your camera and then move on because it's so, there's so little time to get through oh, so much. I don't know. So you don't get any notes, yeah. you don't get any feedback, you don't know how you're doing. So I'll watch it and then I'll go, okay, that works. Mm, God, that didn't work. Why not? And then <laughs> while you're still filming, you can then, you can then get it better. Yeah. Be more, be more truthful, do it better, you know. Yeah, it's um, Somebody's giving Daniel, me Day Daniel, Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> Is that the one you were talking about? And there's yeah, uh, and somebody somebody yeah, yeah, said yeah, yeah, yeah. Adrian Dunbar. Yeah. Yeah, you see they're helpful Dunbar bunch. Is, there. Isn't Adrian Dunbar amazing? I'm watching um <laughs> um I'm watching um uh The Handmaid's Tale at the moment. Oh my god. Have you seen it? 
I, I've heard about the it. The handmaid's though. tale. My, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin loves. Have you seen Ozark? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. That was incredible. Yeah. There's just some fantastic stuff out there, isn't there? Eh? Yeah. Words. Ozark. You know, we were, we were so, just, it, so where's so what what was your so okay so if you had to choose one because the variety is the spice of life but what sort of it's going to be the dramas it's going to be films is it going to be stage is it going to be teaching which ones do you actually prefer what gets your thing or is it just the I think film better? I think film I think I, I love yeah. theatre. Uh, I do love theatre. I did a fantastic um, uh, theatre at 53 2 in Manchester. Uh, Chris Hoyle wrote it a few years ago, the, the newspaper boy, which has probably been the best time I've been on stage because the writing and the direction and the piece was just so exciting. It mm -hmm. was fringe. We had 100 people in. That was more thrilling for me than doing War Horse in front of 2000, you know, because you wow. could smell the audience. I love that. was my yeah. favourite time ever on stage doing that show. But I think. I think if I had to just choose one, it would be film or TV screen because of the intimacy and the challenge. I'm still challenged. I'm still challenged, um, challenged by it to strip back, make it more believable, be braver, do less acting, do less pushing, pull it right back, work with thought, and just see if I can be as as brave as that. Really, I've I've still got so much to learn. I find I find TV more challenging still because I'm. I can see where I need I could I could be more truthful if I was more braver in my work, which means doing less showing. Um, so, um, having done it for 40 yeah. years, you're saying you've still got to learn, and I love that. Oh, God, I, yeah, I, in my job, I say, I, you know, if I ever say to you to anybody, I, you know, I know everything, then kick me up the backside because I don't, and, and I always get no. frustrated with people say, Yeah, yeah, I know it all, and and you don't. No. And the fact, you know, 40 years, you nearly 40 years have been doing it, and you're saying, Yeah, I've still got so much to learn, absolutely, incredible. absolutely. I love, I love, I love it all the time. You know, try. I'm filming at the moment something for Sky, and I had a lovely monologue. I was filming two nights ago. It, it, we finished. It was a night shoot. I finished at three in the morning. It had a lovely this monologue about grief, talking to my sort of daughter-in-law in it. And we had this fantastic location in the middle of these woods in Pointon, in this shack, in this cafe shack that I think in real life bikers go to during the day and walkers go to. It was, yeah. And I'd have this this page monologue about grief and how to come to terms with grief and what it means, and. I just thought the writing was so beautiful. And I know grief. I mean, we all no, we all, all know grief. It doesn't have to necessarily mean the gr grieving of a, a, of a human being. It can be grief of a pet, uh, uh, you know, uh, mm. uh, anything that you've lost, lost, you know. And the writing was mm. so beautiful that I really thought, right, I'm going to try and be brave, eat really brave now and do nothing with it apart from say it and think about the meaning of it and don't push emotion. Don't just sit back and let the writing breathe. And I've tried it. I don't know if it'll work. I won't know until it comes out next year. I have no idea. Well, well, I don't know. I, I know um, that um, I, was I was watching Viewpoint. I know it had a, cont a controversial ending and whatever, um, but I remember seeing you, Sophia, the, who you know, is pointed out, I said, oh, you know, Karen's in here. I remember seeing you, and I remember seeing you, and Ian Paulson Davies was in that one, wasn't he? Who yes, had he on. was. And just yes. the way you were, and I thought – you it's so interesting and I, I it was fascinating because at that point you were just walking with purpose somewhere but it, the whole everyone's interest is on you and you just I, think I, I you just I couldn't act that that it, it's just it was it was a quite a, an ordinary thing you did but it was fascinating people were like your immediate thoughts is what's she up to what's she hiding why is she walking well, with such purpose confidence but is she a bit scatty as well what is it yeah, you know well you you would have found out if they hadn't overshot by 25 minutes. No, they overshot no. the whole project by 25 minutes. And my character, a really interesting character, not a huge role, but a fast, quite yeah. an interesting character. And all those things that you did see that you go, oh, she's a millionaire, but she's a bag lady. She looks like a bag lady, but actually she's got £8 mm. million pounds in the bank. Those lines that yeah. dropped in was all explained in the 25 minutes uh. of, that was overshot that was then cut out. Oh, because no. uh, my story was involved with this, a, a sort of side story that was sort of involved with the main story and other actors in the side story and other the main characters in the side story. Yeah. But because they'd overshot by 25 minutes, 25 minutes had to go. And so they, that was what my character was. Yeah, I was gutted. Absolutely I gutted. Bet. So you've got this very interesting character that's talked about a bit, but is never explained. And the explanation was cut out. Do, yeah. you, do, do you struggle yeah. with nerves? Do you struggle with nerves, even whatever it is? 
just before you go on, or is it a healthy nerve? It's healthy is it nerves. A, I, some mean, people are paralyzed, nerves, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's <clears> healthy <throat> nerves now. Yeah. I, I, I did a play, right. Occupies on Ice, in, um, I can't remember what it was now, uh, about seven, eight years ago, and I had something like five 12 minute monologues in this play. Uh, and that's the only time I've ever wow. gotten a, a stage fright. That that's is scary. Yeah, I, that's that's scary. I don't know how you do that. No. I do I, not know. I, I my brain can't do that. Own. I know. I can barely remember my name. Uh, we have to remember <laughs> when we go to when we go to uh, to training school. We have to remember. I can't remember how many how many laws was it? Was Definitions. It? Yeah, right, I can give you theft still and section well, three yeah. of criminal law act. Know these. <laughs> I it was a, re a really high number as well. I can't remember how many it was, but you had to know them word for word. Yeah. So. And that's just like two lines of a law. But, yeah. but it, it's, it's a skill, that. though, Dave. It's a skill like any skill. The more you do it, the more you repeat it, the more, the more, the easier it becomes. It's like what you do. It's like what you do, Harry. The easy, you just repetition, repetition, yeah. practice, practice, yeah. practice. It's like sewing a needle. I, it take me sewing a needle, sewing a button on. It would take me. Yeah. 10 minutes to sew a button on. But my mum, it would take her 30 seconds because that's what she used to do. It's the same well, as I'm, anything, I'm, isn't it? Yeah. The more you do, the more you I'll practice. Let you know, I'm, I'm the sewer in my family. Uh, I sewed the rip in my son's trousers, I'll have you know, and I do a good job. Uh, <laughs> just saying, putting out that, my wife, she has been known to staple things in, oh, as an God. emergency. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's complete. <laughs> I said so we could get could get into that. So, all right, Karen, I want to know as well, right? So you, you're say you're giving. I want to. I want this answer in five seconds. It's nothing about personally what which people were nice or anything, but you've got to do a soap, and you're going to be in it for six months. Which one is it going to be? Well, it would be Coronation Street. It would be Coronation. It Street. would be Coronation right. Street. Yeah, because for lots of reasons, but it would be Coronation Street. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want to. I would. I'm, I'm happy I've done it. I wouldn't necessarily. I don't want to go back to do it. No, but that would I be understand. the one because because it's because because uh, it's because it's on my doorstep. No, I okay. think the yeah. nicest locations might be Emmerdale, though. You know, oh, in Yorkshire, yeah. uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd, I'd like yeah. to do it. I, I, if if I was to do, I would then I'd maybe propose to do that because I'm not because of the location yeah. and that lovely village and in the middle of all that land that would be if nice. you want to if you want to win all the prizes you go coronation street is that still the case now do they win all the prizes every year coronation no, street? no. no, no. <laughs> do they not <laughs> and there's Corey and emmerdale isn't it always up against each other yeah well hollyoaks has done very well as well with as far as the soap opera awards they they've really right. picked up you know they have yeah. been taken they're taken seriously now as far as the soap opera awards now i don't think they were initially but they certainly are now you know yeah. yeah you 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 mentioned earlier about your uh your latest uh detective thing that you're in and, and yeah. you were i think you were in a very glamorous place weren't you uh where have you been oh, budapest. we were in budapest, budapest? yes tell yeah. me about the wonderful uh, attractions of budapest what did you well, see well I, I would have liked to have seen more attractions but it was in lockdown so uh. i was i had a thing i think i had about four days on that project um, but because everything was in lockdown, they flew me out there and um, I had two days shoot and then I had 10 days off and then another two days shoot and then I was flown back to England. And in those 10 days, they didn't want to because of all the paperwork, all the yeah. paperwork to then leave the country. I was terrified. Um, so much paperwork, mm. uh, so much organising uh, that they thought it would be easier uh, and safer to stay, keep yeah. me in Budapest and put me up in a hotel and pay for that. So I went to Budapest and stayed in a hotel for 10 days. I was allowed out. I did go okay. running every other day for 20 minutes. Uh, and then I go back to the hotel and I did I did, I did, did welcome the rest. Uh, I did a lot of reading. Yeah. Uh, the only thing on TV I could watch was the world news. That was the only thing that was in English. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I ate a lot. And um, I did, you weren't allowed out after eight o'clock at night um, because there were police officers with machine guns and you could be arrested. Uh, I um, and they I, moan I, about I, ours, Dave. I know, you moan about our lockdown. Gosh. I did go on a tour. I did go on a bicycle tour uh, for a day, well, for three and a half hours um, for, with a company. And, that, and I saw Budapest on the back of a bicycle with a tour guide, and that was fantastic. But the rest yeah. of the time, there was nothing open. There was, you couldn't go in any buildings. So you just had to look at everything from the outside. So once you've seen it, you've seen it. I'd go back to be able to get into places, but, um, but I've seen it now. Mm. Um, the city, you know. So, 
my, I've got three daughters. None of them want to be an act, act in an, an actor. But if they did, if they were, had aspiring um, uh, dreams of becoming an actor, I mean, you, you've touched on it once by saying, you know, get a life, go and go and see the world. But what what would be your biggest your biggest single piece of advice for somebody who wanted to get into acting? Oh God, well, it's not even advice. I mean, you've got to want it more than anything else. Yeah, you've got that motivation. Um, Mm, yeah because it's tough um uh, 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 hard work yeah. keep the faith keep the training up um going to go to, go to workshops uh, go to the theater uh, get inspired um watch good tv good good dramas get some good netflix on uh, know what you like know what you don't like and don't give up yeah uh, and there's no more guarantee Go and experience a whole bag full of sad stuff so that when the sad one sad <laughs> thing goes on, you get yeah, lots of puppies. <laughs> You're going to get a few <laughs> yeah. triggers under your belt, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just buy a puppy, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, go and ob watch people, you know, observe. Yeah. Go, to, go to art galleries, go and get inspired. Um, yeah, you you, are you a people watcher then, are you? Yeah, are you, I love you people watch? watching. Yeah, but it yeah. comes... It comes with our role, with what we do, doesn't it, Harry? People watching is is a thing. I mean, yeah. you you go sit in a town centre on a Saturday night, and that's what that's all you do. Is it's just surveillance, and you can see, you know, you you think you see that bloke in the queue, and you'll be like, yeah, can you? you? It'll be you that I'm dealing with later, and it will be. Can you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What is it that the you... trouble is? The trouble is, everyone says what's worrying as well. I mean, I'd be like this or something, and they go, "Oh, why are you a police officer? Are you a copper?" And I'm like, "How do you know that?" They say, "Well, you look like one." <laughs> really? Yeah. Is that hat on you, hanging on your wall behind you that you take everywhere with you? That's what this it is. This is it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Hey, yeah no, what is it? It's difficult, Karen. It, it, it's just it's it's the same sort of thing for you, I guess. You can't you couldn't put one your finger on one thing, but you, you watch them, you watch their behaviour, their their demeanour, how they are with the people around them, um, you know, how flighty they might be, or right. you know, they, like they're testing the waters on the way in and you know that on the way out they will do a little bit more than test the waters right. um, and, and most, most of the time you're right you can you can just see it coming i guess it's because when, when you're a, when you're a young officer you know you've been out there and you've got it wrong and you've got you've got whacked <laughs> you've got back right. you know you've got punched because they, you, they... you trusted <clears throat> someone you probably shouldn't have trusted I, I remember right. they because if you're acting, I guess you stereotype people. You say, "Well, how how's this person going to react? You know, how are they going mm. to be?" And mm. and well, they've had a you know they've had a hard life. They're 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 they're, they're not very wealthy. They've, they're struggling. They've had illness in the family. Okay, how are they going to behave? How are they going to act? And I remember when I was at training college thirty years ago, and it was like, right, stereotyping it doesn't exist. We shouldn't do it. And they'd like, I said, so so am I going to you know, am I just going to wait outside the Catholic Church for all the blue rinse old ladies to come out and they'll search their boots for drugs? Is, is this what I should do? And they're like, yeah, well, no, that's not <laughs> what we mean. But yeah, they're in this training. And I, but then it gets to the point. Remember, in the years gone by, they they had a they thought that the structure of your skull made out whether you were a potential criminal or not. Oh, really? And they really looked into it genuinely and they looked about the shape. And if you look at it on the internet, and they've got some versions, they study <laughs> criminals and they say they've all got this sort of structure, this bone structure, you know, so that they could tell. But it shows how it can go wayward in the wrong place yeah, right. if you take it too seriously. Yeah. And there's, of course, there's always exceptions, isn't there? There's always exceptions. But I guess. You know, if you if you've got someone who is um, uh, poor, born, brought up in an inner city council estate, and they've struggled with their life, they're more likely to have dabbled in crime because they felt that they've needed to that they life has done them a worse, uh, whereas somebody else doesn't have to because they've got bank account at the end of their hands. So those sort of stereotypes, and it's a lot more complicated, isn't it? Yes, but it's sometimes it's a bit of an arrogance about someone. It's like, look at me, I've entered the shop and I'm in my tracksuit, and it's sort of, yeah, well, you know, and it's geezer type thing. And you're thinking, I don't think he he conducts a choir in the local church, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Harry, Harry, you caught up in a beautiful place. 
in uh, in in Newquay in Cornwall, where I was brought up on a housing estate in South East London. So, uh, we had a Dave, I'm, 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 I'm surprised I even talked to him. I'm surprised <laughs> I even talked to the man. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. he's. <laughs> <laughs> but but that is the point though karen is that dave could have gone the other way because you 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 had you read it in uh, dave's book um is uh, fabulous finn and, and his it will bring a tear to your eye that is a, a thing he had a tough tough old life yeah. and it was the it was the connection with animals that yeah. then got yeah. him to say like yeah. this is what i want and you you were just walking your neighbor's dog weren't you just to get out the house and earn a few quid weren't you dave I yeah, think, um, yeah I'll, I'll try and keep it short, but my, my, my dad's dog taught me loyalty like no human could and then to get out of the house because my <clears> mum <throat> suffered from depression. I used to walk everybody's dog, and it was at that point I was like, oh, my God, animals are incredible. Which is why the film oh, War Horse a, a real chord with me. It was a, a wonderful, wonderful piece of writing by Michael Morpurgo. It was absolutely incredible. Um, but um, So what's next for, for you, Karen? Do you know? Well, lots, uh, lots uh, just up? finishing... I've got just I've got another few um, a, a, a little bit more time on uh, the rising this uh, sky thing that I'm doing um, that'll be out next year sometime and then I've got a self tape to do for some for a new Channel Four thing on Monday. Uh, I'm teaching. Uh, mm. I've got private students. Um, uh, loads of stuff. stuff. Pardon. Loads of stuff. Loads of stuff. And I've got my workshops that'll start at fifty three two very soon back in Manchester. Uh, in the next couple of months, that when things get back to normal and everyone's comfortable being in a big group, you know, again without wearing a mask on camera, yeah. Uh, yeah. So oh. uh, lots. It'll, I'm I'm going to be really busy. It's great, and I've just and it'll be great. And it'd, it'd be great to get people in the theatres again because I think they've <laughs> really been hit hard. Yeah, and it, there could be a delay, of course, as yeah, because there's a delay because you can't just have a production like that, can you? No, you know, no. You, I mean, we when, when we were filming last week. Uh, well, we've been they've been filming for a month now. Uh, they had to hold production for a week because the director and one of the drivers and the lead actor got was it was HIV was uh, COVID yeah. positive. Uh, yeah. So um, they had to stop. So we're all self isolating. Last week we're all self isolating. So you know, and everyone's on set with masks. We're yeah. not allowed to take our masks off until we go for a take. Everybody's on. Everybody's in masks. Uh, so it's oh. it's it, we're not we're not we'd buy any no stretch of the imagination safe at all from it and of course July the nineteenth is it and everyone's supposed to be partying yeah. I don't know anyway uh, <laughs> yeah so it, it's going to be tough it's going to be tough uh, yeah. Karen you've been amazing the hour Thank is up for having me it's lovely to meet oh. you. Sorry, oh, yeah. oh, let me go. No, we love that. It's fantastic. We love it. Oh, we love it. Thank we you, we, we, we try to find. We try to find people who talk more than me, and, uh, and I, I, I still think I'm beating you. No, I think yeah. I've still got it. I'm, a, I'm ahead. I'm ahead. Hey, it's been a, it's been brilliant, Karen. I Thank can't wait you. to see you and, and all these new things coming up. And uh, Thank you. Let's hope COVID get the kick COVID out now. Karen, Let's get it started. One thing we've got to try and do when we watch Karen playing a detective is not sit there like we do with all police shows and say, "Won't do yeah. that. Won't do that." Yeah. <laughs> well, now now I know to blame my friend. It was her friend's fault. That's who it is. It's wrong oh info. Oh God! You know? I say with that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank Sorry. you ever so much. Show all the people who joined us live today as well. It's really appreciated. And uh yeah. Oh, babe. Nope. Oh, Harry's frozen. Harry's gone quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <Hey! laughs> well, in, okay. in Harry's absence, I'm gonna say, Karen, thank you ever so much. It was thank lovely you. to meet you. It's been Look an absolute pleasure. Well. It's been lovely.